batter up. It's Earl freaking Weaver on the Amigos Everything Amiga podcast. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're talking about Earl Weaver baseball. The world famous Earl Weaver boat. Now, is a podcast with a large European listening contingent. I know yeah. that our audience is at the edge of their seats waiting to hear about Earl Weaver and his baseball simulator. It's but like Graham we, Gooch, boat. It's sort of the before, same thing. That's true. But before we get into it, we got to talk about Boat Fest, Aaron. Boat Fest happened yeah. last week. In fact, this time last week. We were in the hallowed halls of the Copper Room on downtown Main Street, Hurricane, West Virginia. Aaron, what did you think about Boat Fest this year? Gosh, you're right. I didn't even occur to me that it had been a week. It seems like we just walked out that uh, evil can evil ramp. Uh, <laughs> listen, I thought it was great, uh, Boat. Uh, I had a lot of fun this year. I got to do more stuff than I did last year, but I stayed busy, uh, that's for sure. I think I was in the building pretty much almost the entirety of when it was open. And uh, I, I really had a good time, a good turnout, uh, so many cool things. In fact, there was stuff I didn't get to play with that I really wanted to, uh, and so many great people. The you know what makes or breaks a little meeting, a little gathering like this is like the people's attitudes, people's moods, you know. And everyone was in a super groovy mood. They were all chill. They were having a good time. They were excited uh, and friendly. Uh, I really loved it, boat. Yeah, I mean. After last year, I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to top, uh, sort of not necessarily top the excitement, but top or top attendance, but just top the same kind of feeling that we got yeah. last year. And, uh, you know, somehow we, we managed to pull it off again. I, everybody seemed to really enjoy themselves. I loved just walking around and talking to people. I was much less nervous this year because we had air conditioning at the beginning of the event. Uh, last year, not having that AC for the first day was very harrowing. Uh, yeah. But I think... We can all agree that you were the star of the show because of your your roving interview segment. You went through, you talked to every single person that came from a great distance, and even some people that came from not a great distance. And for a lot of people that were watching at home, that was what saved the show as far as the internet stream went. Well, I mean, I, I didn't get to talk to everybody. There were a few people I didn't get to talk to. Uh, you gave me I the cold shoulder. To. Well, but I did actually. I talked to you briefly, and I was like, "This guy's dead air." But mm. uh, I talked to as many people as I could. Uh, and, uh, it was great. I enjoy it. I'll let you know me, Boat. I, I will talk perpetually. So, I, and I, and a lot of the guys there were real friendly and fun to talk to. And I learned a lot. Hey, we had guys there from, uh, closer than I would have thought, like Frankfort, Kentucky, which is where I get to when I work. And, uh, uh a fellow right across the board, a couple guys in Tennessee. So people that are somewhere, somewhere in the ballpark. Well, we had a new guy that came down that was just uh, a few counties up. You know, he just, we, I don't know how he found us. Uh, so it was nice to meet some new people. And then a lot of the friends we knew, you know, you talk to people and you see them in chats or whatever, but you don't get to really sit down and really get to, you know, discuss stuff with them, talk about what you've been up to. I liked going around and looking at everybody's displays, you know, because there were so many interesting uh, computers and projects there. That uh, it was a lot of fun. Everything from Taste of the Crypt's Nuon to uh, Mobius's like really sleek uh, black like A500 project. Uh, there was the uh, uh, Naboo. There was the, uh, the uh, BBC Master was there, which was nice. Just a lot of great stuff, Boat. Uh, and how many of those? We had what four of those portable C64s there. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was great. I really enjoyed talking to everybody. Next year. I'm going to find somewhere to settle my interview segment down and just bring them in. That way I don't have to keep walking around. But, yeah, what I had a good your, time doing it. What, what was the highlight of the show for you? Oh, boy. You know, as stupid as it sounds, I've been really wanting to play with the new one <laughs> for a long time. And, and much like with last year with the four-player Jag, which you did that again this year, but any of these exotic machines, they you ha they have to be uh, uh, ornery, and and they have to be difficult to play, and the games are you know not that good. But th it was such a bizarre thing to see in person, something I've never seen before since we covered on ARG. 
that I really enjoyed that. I, I, I'd say that was one of the highlights, was just getting to play the new one just a little while. Just because it came out of my nightmares, basically. So I enjoyed it. What about you? Uh, I loved, 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 loved the auction. Uh, yeah. Oh, not boy. only because uh, I, I made some money, but also because your brother, the Brent, was an excellent, excellent auctioneer. He really did a great job moving the items, keeping the flow going. Uh, of course, big shout out to 48K Ram for helping bring the items up oh, and, yeah. and to show stuff off on camera. And he also knew everything. That helped a lot. We had some really high dollar items go. We had a CD32 complete uh, IBM XT setup. Uh, lots of really, really great stuff. People didn't just bring their junk. They brought their, the, the, the gems of their collection to auction off. People yeah. got good deals. People felt happy with the prices that they got. Everybody left with a little bit more money in their pocket if you were an auctioneer. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a great time. The auction, I was, I'm not going to lie, I was a, a little worried about how that would go down because you don't want people to think they're getting screwed. You know what I mean? Or they're not getting mm -hmm. the money. But, I mean, right. I, that went so much better than I would have anticipated. I mean, I can't tell you how much, how happy I was about that. Plus, I've got an we Atari a, ST sitting in my in my trunk right now, so it went pretty You know, okay. we had uh, t Todd Gill, who was only able to come for the first day of the event. He he showed up with a stack of Amiga 2000s and just plopped them down on the table. They said, hey, it's for charity. And then he just walked out the door. We never saw him again. I didn't get to talk to him either. He's another one I didn't get to speak with. So, yeah, that was awesome. We had some great donated stuff that where the money went to charity, you know. Which we appreciate. We had a, uh, uh, a uh, an Amiga, and we had a bunch of stuff from uh, our good buddy Scoob. Uh, so thanks, guys. So we actually raised a bunch more money for the Children's Miracle Network. Hey, if you can raise a little charity on the side, not too bad, boat. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, overall though, I had a great time. The meals were all great. Uh, I felt like once, much like last year, I felt like we got away with some stuff that maybe wouldn't have went our way on some days, but we got <laughs> real lucky. Uh, for the most part, and uh, I want to thank. So, Aaron, you. right yeah. now, as far as you're concerned, will there be a Boat Fest 2024? That was the last one, Boat. Uh, <laughs> that will be the that will be our swan song. I mean, go out on a high note, and uh, no, I mean, listen. It's up. To, is it called Aaron Aaron Fest? It's not. It's called Boat. So, really, only you can make that determination, Boat. Well, you know, I don't want to make any any early calls, but I'll say there's a chance. That there will be a boat fest 2024 and uh we would love to have you come if you're listening right now um as soon as we make an announcement you know we had guys come in big big thanks to everybody that came in from wherever you came from because everybody gave up a weekend including the mayor boat there. don't forget to give including that guy the some mayor love. scott edwards was here uh he mm -hmm. was hobnobbing meeting and greeting but a uh, special shout out to everybody that came from out of country. You want to talk about a special effort, all the Canadian crew, Pajaco and Mitz coming from the UK. And of course, the living legend, Graham W. Bebke, flying all the way here from sunny Australia. Yeah. And I, I'll, a couple of extra shout outs. I want to talk to a level Lord and his family who had us over on Monday for uh, yes. at his at his uh, B and B or whatever for a, a yeah. delicious dinner. Turns Killer out his barbecue. Wife's, yeah, his wife's a, like a pro cook. And no kidding, after I ate that bread they made. Mm -hmm. And his family was great. Uh, my son had a great time over there. So that was uh, just super nice of him as well. So, you know, like you said, it was a great bunch. Uh, and uh, may, if we do it again next year, now that we got the mayor on our side, you never know what we're going to get into, Bo. That should be a lot of fun if it happens. That's right. Let's talk about Earl Weaver's baseball there. Oh, man, I, it's about time, Bo. You know, this is, as I mentioned earlier, but we talked about Graham G Gooch. I mm -hmm. believe that was, was that, was that Crooked? He was that was Crooked, of, yeah. Yeah. Now, dude, me and you never heard of him, and, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know how with that name. And I will admit, Earl Weaver, it does sound kind of lame next to Graham Gooch. But this is that kind of game where you find a guy, and even amongst Americans now, if you ask your average baseball fan who Earl Weaver was, they may or may not know. They have I mean, to be of a certain age, for it's sure. It's not like this guy's like Pete Rose or right. you know, or like Ty Cobb. Mm -hmm. But what he was, the Georgia Peach. What he was a professional baseball manager 
He played the minor leagues, uh, but never made the pros. Yeah, that. a lot of managers are like that. But he worked know? his way up, and he mm-hmm. actually managed 17 years with the same team, wow. but Boston, uh, the Baltimore Orioles. The Boston Red the Sox. Boston, the Boston, no, no, the Baltimore <laughs> Orioles. And uh, you'll remember uh, his days uh, with the Orioles. He was a he was a winner. This, there's a reason. Let me tell you something. If you in a major sport like baseball, if you're not winning games every year, you're gone. Like mm-hmm. trust me, they'll 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 boot you in a heartbeat. Uh, and so, but he had a he had one of the all time great win percentages. Boat, if you can believe that. I uh, can believe that's it. sort of that's sort of what he is known for. Uh, which and it's funny, an all time great win percentage. It's just over 500, Boat, 583. Hey, but When you play 162 games in a season, yeah. uh, the, uh, 500 percentage is great. So get this. He he lost two. He lost three World Series. He lost uh, two pennants, but he did win one World Series. That's all it takes, brother. I yeah, believe man. he had guys like Eddie Murray on the team, Jim mm-hmm. Palmer yeah. was yeah. a big a player back in those days. So... He had a he had a good team and longevity, the kind of longevity that you don't see that often in pro baseball. But the one thing he did do, he was a student of the game, and that's one thing. That's one reason that I think he got chosen uh, to. I'd also probably one of the first guys they asked, or the first guy that said yes. There's any number of reasons. I tried to get into why they picked him, and I, that's literally what a lot of people said. He was the first guy to agree to do it, and so because much like Madden. This wasn't one of those games that EA was going to stick out there and uh, not have some sort of participation from the guy on the box. It's not like now, where they don't, you know, they can have boats baseball as long as the, as long as they drive a dump truck full of money up to your house. You're going to sign off on that, aren't you, boat? I'm still waiting for the dump truck of money. Yeah. <laughs> so, Earl Weaver. Now, this was an Amiga. Amiga was the first dibs on Earl Weaver. But we'll get to how there's an Intellivision uh, connection here, boat. Uh, this was released in 87 on a disc uh, developed by Mirage uh, Graphics. Only they ever did on the Amiga, published by EA. You can have two players, uh, and really you can have an uh, exponential number of players, depending on how you play this, which we'll get into that. How many players can you have? Well, you can, you got to think you can play leagues, fantasy leagues, so you can literally have uh, someone own every team. Oh, okay. So this yeah. isn't a, this isn't the case where you can have, it's, it's not like a dungeon situation where no. you got four people on the same keyboard. No, okay. no, no, okay. no, no. So this was designed by Don Daglo and Eddie Dombrower, okay, mm-hmm. coded by Don Brower. So this, there's an interesting backstory to this. Uh, remember the old Intellivision boat? We both liked the Intellivision, Mattel and Television. They had a great game for that called MLB Baseball. Okay, yeah. For, for, now it was great. We both loved that too. But forget about that. Okay. Okay. They there was a game in the works. You'll recall that there was a lawsuit to because Mattel had promised you could turn the Intellivision into a computer, but they never really came through with it. Then they sort of did. That sort of was the Aquarius. But mm-hmm. there was also an Intellivision with a keyboard, okay? But no one's got one, hardly. So, uh, Eddie Dombauer and Don Daglo were working on a game for that, and it was ultimately released. It was called Intellivision World Series Baseball. And I, I never, I'd, I'd seen footage for this, but I didn't know what it was. So I looked into it, and what it was was a, uh, think about this on the Intellivision. It was a baseball game sort of with a side 3D perspective that had picture in picture whenever your players made plays out in the field. It's wow. re- if, it looks way better than this, okay? I'm go- I'm not lying. Like, mm-hmm. if you looked at this and looked at the Intellivision version, you'd be like, man, the Intellivision version looks great. And it was also stat-based, okay? So they got this thing up and running, and Mattel kept phasing crap out. And they're like, oh, man, it supports the keyboard. We don't really want that. You know? So I don't know how many of these things were even sold or whatever, but uh, Don and Eddie were like, eh, this sucks. And so EA was like, hey, wait a minute. We can use that. How about over here? And so they, oh, this is sort of, this is not a sequel. This is not the same code. But it's somewhat the same idea that was behind the Intellivision uh, version of World Series Baseball. Uh, just to round out the cast, uh, the graphics and the coding were done by Eddie uh, Don Brower. The music by Peter Sprague. I think he did the sound effects. And the actual music by Terry Mason. And Terry Mason also did Swords of Twilight. And you also, in the credits, you've got to credit Earl Weaver, believe it or not. So, um, when they were designing this thing, they wanted to get Earl Weaver in there. Okay? And so, they inter- they kept interviewing Weaver in his hotel room 
on the, when he was when the team was on the road because he was managing at the time, right? This is like really. I, yeah. I thought he'd already retired by then. No, okay. no. And so Don Brower, I've read this before, uh, but he apologized to Weaver one time. He's like, "Listen, because we're so sorry, we keep following you around. These hotelers are taking up all your time." But Weaver told them he he was happy they were doing it. He said he never had anything to do on the road, and he got bored in the hotel room. And he also just liked talking about baseball and stats. So you That's had fantastic. a really, you had a what a can sport. you imagine? Yeah, you can imagine this old, gray, you know, silver-haired guy just in there talking about how this game was going to work statistically. So, as I mentioned, much like with Madden, they didn't just like uh, put his name on there. I mean, he was. I'm not sure how integral he was to the entirety of the program, but I mean, he did have input a lot mm-hmm. of it because they they, sure. went at, they went after him on the road. So, let's get into what this game is. On the, if you just look at this game on the outside, it looks like a kind of a real weak graphical baseball game. It is, it's not impressive looking. Would you wait? Really? You would call it weak in the graphics department? I don't think it's that. I don't think it's impressive at all. I mean, it's really? it's like maybe two steps up from uh, Coco baseball. I mean, it's 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 so it's passable. You can tell what's happening, but the the graphics sort of hide. What is in effect an incredible juggernaut of statistical uh, and optional type gameplay? This game reminds me a lot, Bo. Do you remember when we covered uh, Tom Landry's football way, way yeah. back? Mm-hmm. This game is very similar to that. In that, I mean, what you've got here is an uh, unbelievable amount of options that this thing comes with. Uh, this game applied uh, point systems to every player okay now when you buy the game when you bought the original game what you got was uh several all-star teams that bridged uh, all, all eras yeah from the 1900s uh 19 early 1900s up to like modern but it right. wasn't like you'll full... have you'll have like ty cobb and then up next you'll have cy young you'll have right, I right. Mean, like decades and decades apart and then uh uh which is fine but and so, based on that, when you play the game, you're picking up, up from these guys. Now, you can shuffle those players. You can make a new teams with the players uh, or do whatever you want. But what they did was, this is very clever, is they released team discs. And te- and they, they released one every year until 1991. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, they released many of these discs. So, it would have a season disc with every team and all their current actual Major League players and all their stats as they were disseminated down by the people that made the game. And then when you got these discs, you could replay seasons. You could literally put all those guys into a huge draft. You could have a complete league-wide draft and then have complete teams for everyone and play a full season of games. It didn't support the playoffs for some reason, but you had you could play a full season of games with this. So from a statistical standpoint... <clears throat> Uh, and not to mention, you could put in your own stuff. I should mention that. Now, they released a bunch of team discs, but even with the team discs, there were certain things you couldn't do. So they released what's called a commissioner's disc that gave you a lot more options to, for scheduling. You could change, like, another thing they said was, like, uh, if you wanted, like, black players on your team, you either had to copy and paste for another black player until you got the commissioner's, and then you could change the skin tones. Stuff mm. like that. There were uh, mm-hmm. ways to design stadiums. Uh, stuff like that. When I I talked to Boat before the show, we could get into the incredible detailed stats that. But I mean, it's so deep that you would just get ridiculous. But I mean, you control every aspect of the game. Now, let's say me and Boat were going to play a game of this. Uh, we could play this in multiple ways. For example, I could play a game against Boat. Where I picked a lower skill level team, and also I picked it so er- so I didn't actually do any of the playing. I would just manage the team, which that's usually what I end up doing. You can manage against, you can play the game and manage the team, or you can just manage the team, let the computer play them, or you can just play or er- have let Earl Weaver control the team. So you can actually pit two computer teams against each other, and if you just want to watch the game. If you're watching a game from the managerial perspective, you can even make it so it, it, it you don't have to watch every pitch. It'll just go through quicker with, like, one pitch at bats. Did you ever try that? No. No, I didn't realize you could speed the game up that way. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it's understandable because when you first look at the opening screen of this thing, 
there are four billion million statistic uh, statistical things. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause right here in the video so we can kind of look this over. Yeah, before I keep rattling on boat, what did you think of this? I mean, had you played this from back in the day? And uh, no. what did you think about? Okay, so this is a whole new experience for you. What did you think when you booted it up? So I come to this from a console perspective. Right. You know, I, I grew up playing RBI baseball, bases loaded, stuff like that. I think you're insane. Because okay. I think for 1987, I think this is a darn fine looking graphically baseball game. I, mean, I challenge you. To, I challenge you to find any baseball game on any home system that comes close to this kind of fidelity. Yeah, maybe maybe it's a little future bias there. I'll admit that. It's, it's, I, serviceable. There, it's serviceable. There are there are things that these players do. For example, when you're waiting for a pitch, the players in the field will fidget. You know, they'll scratch themselves in the true baseball, you know, style. <laughs> yeah, they'll yeah, shift they'd... their legs. It's great. The players, there's, you know, there's multiple colored sprites. The team colors are all correct. One thing you didn't mention was that this game supports full audio. So as each batter comes up to bat, you'll hear, Urshizer up at the yeah. mound or, you know, whatever. I love that. I think that's great. I'm glad um, you mentioned that, but because they use the Amiga's built-in sound stuff. But I read that they went in and, and and spelled all the names of guys phonetically to make mm -hmm. it sound better, and it does a it does a surprisingly good job. And as I mean, there was an, nothing oh, else. There yeah. was nothing else that came close to this on the market at the time. 1987. I went back and I played on the NES. What was available in 1987? There was nothing. There was not. There was Nintendo Baseball. That was crap. That was a crap game. Uh, there, it wasn't really until 1988 with the release of Bases Loaded that you got anything re re approaching the fidelity of this game. It still wasn't the same, and it didn't include any of the statistical information. It's understandable to me why this is known as the gold standard for baseball games on the Amiga because it combines graphical fidelity with the statistical analysis that keeps baseball from being, let's face it, unwatchably boring. To I mean, it's a great <laughs> it's a great combination. Um, the only thing that lets it down is the gameplay. Um, yeah, the, the in particular, and it's not the in particular the hit, the hitting. Uh, this game is different than almost any other i call it the lionheart system of baseball where oh, in boy, most games in. in most games you push the button to swing the bat in this game you hold the button down and release when you want to swing that's yeah. what we call dumb it's there's no i mean it's interesting it's different i mean you gotta think they didn't have anything to go on exactly they did, I, i'm sure that they didn't and it is sort of pinball-esque you know you're sort of pulling the plunger back to release so I, I can understand it, but as somebody that's played a million billion baseball games, it is very, very counterintuitive. And even when you know, even when you know that's what you're supposed to do, hitting is still incredibly difficult. The same thing with pitching. Pitching in this game is incredibly difficult too because you're never sure, is my pitcher getting tired and that's why he's throwing wild? Or am I doing something weird to make him throw wild? The pitching and the hitting controls in this game, subpar. Um, and you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but I'll say this. I truly believe that the vast majority of, of people that really got deep in this game did not play this game. I think they used it as a baseball simulator where they managed the teams because you can get real, real deep in this game as far as, yeah. you know, shifting personnel around, uh, you know, making substitutions, moving through the season. And you can really have a blast, especially like you said, so you can you can speed things up so you're not watching every single pitch. Being able to have the capacity to move through a whole season as a baseball manager, especially if you've got multiple friends that are in on the game, that's real, real fun. Uh, these types of games are real popular in England. You have the whole football manager series, you know, several of those rugby manager, whatever. In America, that wasn't as big of a thing. Most people like to play the games, uh, but it shows you that at the time, you know, the home computer user in 1987 in America was older. You know, it's, you look at this when you look at you know, the, the user groups like the Coco Crowd. I mean, they're one foot in the grave, man. They're almost dead. So this is these guys were in their 30s and 40s in the 80s, and they didn't want something that required a lot of reflexive action. They wanted something where they could sit back, really use statistical analysis, be able to manage the team, be able to manage through a season, and have a good time. You know, I'm going to agree with a lot of what you said there in terms of the... the I, I didn't like playing this game. Like, for example, I would put Coke Color Baseball ahead of this in terms of gameplay. 
and but I'm just gonna I mean the fluid fluidity and stuff. But one thing you, that people have to consider as well. The, again, this is a, a statistically made, uh, based baseball game with an arcade element that keeps the statistics at the forefront. So, like, I was reading that if you go in there and set certain statistics, where, like, for example, there are certain guys you could give them a 10 on, like, base running, where they can't ever be thrown out. Like, they mm-hmm. can butt a home run. So, you can yeah. statistically go bananas if you wanted to. Uh, but I did like the managing. And the managing, you got to do some crazy stuff you wouldn't even consider. For One of the things Earl Weaver, when I think of Earl Weaver, I think of him running to the mound, or running to the first base and screaming at the ump. Which That's what Earl he was Weaver famous for, lot. yeah. Turning the could, hat around so he could get right in his face. You could literally argue with any of the umpires in this. You could, at any time, you could run out and argue with them, which is great. You could talk. You could go out and talk to your pitcher. You're putting guys in the bullpen, whatever you want, to warm them up. I mean, they must have sat around and thought of every conceivable thing here to to, to do. Because I was looking over the controls for this. I mean, it's absolute madness. Uh, and you could you could uh, basically sort of tell your guys what to do. You know, I mean, you could you could really do a lot without actually having to play the game. Now, I will say, if you decide to give this a whirl, uh, and I know, found this out quickly, like on the Mister, this ran like two or three times faster than it should. So I had to dumb everything down to get this to play at the proper speed. Really? Old. Yeah, mine mine played real fast. Oh, but I mean, interesting. I just I just made turned it down. It worked fine. Did you? Were you running just this out of curiosity? Were you running the ADF or the WHD? I was running the ADF. Actually, mm, I didn't have the WHD for this. Um, one of the things, if you're an old baseball fan and you're old like me, like when Earl Weaver was managing, like I was, that was the heyday of me being into baseball. So it was great to see all the old because these are the real guys. It was great to see all those guys. And it was actually sort of fun to watch. As bad as I just sort of creamed the graphics, watching a game of this is a lot like watching a real game. I mean, it's very similar. It is. Because, it is. Yeah. It, it, this is this is something, I mean, as, apart from the commentary, which you can provide yourself if yeah. you're sitting. I mean, think about the fun of sitting back. Of course, this is back in the 80s when there wasn't as much to do. Sitting back on <laughs> an afternoon where there there isn't a game on, with two or three of your buddies, you're chilling out, you crack up in a couple cold ones, and you watch your two teams battle it out while you're making substitutions, while you're asking Earl what to do. That sounds like a lot of fun to me. Yeah, you, by the way, you can ask Earl what to do. I mean, that's yeah. nothing you can do in the game. So, I mean, statistically, I don't, I'd be surprised if anything, there, There's because Earl Weaver 2 didn't come out on the Amiga. So, statistically, you're not going to find a better baseball game on the Amiga. There's probably not a much better ones out there. I mean, I'm sure by now someone has picked up on this formula because there were sequels to this that got released, including Girl Weaver Baseball 2. There's a game called I Got It Baseball. And then there was some uh, uh, Dom that Bauer. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, well, he, he lost the uh, license for Earl Weaver. It was a they called it I Got It? You know, like, so I got it, I got it. Hey, listen, I know, I also, know, I know. There's a cell phone for, or an I, uh, there's a, I think it's an a, a Apple phone version of this. So there are still people that dig this today, but I mean, I and without getting too deep into it, the stats are unbelievable. And I played I, the first thing I did, but was I, I downloaded a, one of the uh, All Star discs that had team like famous teams, not just mm-hmm. guys. And I played the uh, seventy five Reds against the sixty nine Mets, you know. And I played a series with them. I stuffed a mud hole in these suckers. <laughs> That's because the seventy five Reds. But I mean, here they come. All my old favorites come out. George mm-hmm. Foster, Tony Perez, and Pete Rose, and Johnny Bench. I was like, oh, yeah. And and Tom, and Tom Sieber was pitching against us. He played for the Reds. So it was that was awesome, you know. I just loved that part. And this reminded me, you know, I used to be a big baseball fan. And so I really got a big kick out of this. This game had a lot of firsts, including it was the first game to like let you pick different stadiums. Which is cool. It's there's got stadiums in it that don't exist. All, there's there's a stadium construction mode where yeah. you can set the you can set the the the, the fences anywhere you want, which yeah. makes them for some real crazy stadiums if you want. Yeah, but I mean, if you think about that, you're a guy who's never seen a game like this, and all of a sudden they're like, oh yeah, you can play Evans Field and all mm-hmm. these fields that don't Polo exist. Polo grounds. If you, yeah. If you're an older guy, that'd be like mm-hmm. tear tear jerking type stuff Absolutely. right there. You know, I you know you could. When you pitch and play with the joystick, and it gives you a, a different options how you want to play this. I mean, you get to pick the pitch, and like you said, the batting's a little weird. It's a little wonky, 
It's a little, uh, it's like I said, they're breaking new ground. And I, again, that's not the best. But, I mean, you can actually play it. The fielding's sort of automated. You know, you don't have to do a whole lot of that. You know, but I, if, if you're going to play this game for just the baseball, I would pl- probably get something else. But if you're going to play yeah, this. Yeah, I, I think I think hardball probably plays a little bit better as a baseball game on the Amiga as far as the, the gameplay goes. Especially hardball mm-hmm. 2, yeah. Yeah, hardball 2, yeah. And Hardball yeah. stole a lot of the stuff out of this. But, I mean, Hardball is not in its wildest dreams, statistically, no. in the same no. way. And I liked Hardball. And the same thing, I mean, a lot of games ripped this off. Pretty much all of them. Like, TV Sports Basketball is another one where you can go in and program your whole team. But, again, statistically, and also it's basketball. Like, baseball, you mentioned it. It's the statistical master when mm-hmm. it comes to that. So, there's no there's no game that's going to be able to do what this one did statistically. Um I checked this thing out to see how well... I was interested to see how this thing would review, both, if I'm honest. Because, I, you know, uh, a lot of the magazines aren't into baseball or whatever, so I didn't know. There weren't a ton of reviews for it, but uh, on Lemon, I was pleasantly surprised, Boat. This thing has an 8.06, which is... That's real good. Uh, Ace gave this an 8.43, and Commodore User gave this an 8 out of 10, which are good. I mentioned it had all the statistic discs from uh, 86 to 91... It's also got a couple, like, I found this all-star team list, and also there's the commissioner's disc. Plus, apparently, there's, like, a million, like, bootleg discs that people just made with, like, oh, that sure. went further. So right. there's a chance. I wonder if there's anybody out there that's still putting in stats for this in, like, 2023. That'd be pretty awesome. If you're out there doing that, give me, a, give me a note, <laughs> uh, uh, for God's sakes. Uh, on eBay, this is going for 50 bucks, all the way 20 to $50, depending if you catch it. This is one of those patented... EA flat like LP style game, yeah, 45 game style. Yeah. Did we get any action on the Discord on this boat? Oh man, we did. We got tons of act. I'm just kidding. Really? We got no. We, we got no, we got no oh, reviews. On it I was really hoping you know, somebody would give this a whirl. This is a game, Aaron. That uh, you've got to be sort of I, I want to say uh, Americanly inclined to appreciate. Yeah, just, and I guess you have to really be in the stats. I should mention. I mentioned that this came out a couple other machines. Uh, one of the ones that came out on was DOS, and the DOS version has been widely regarded as not as good as the Amiga version. I know it's stunning, uh, uh, stunning news. But it, the Amiga, but I mean, they did. I heard that the DOS version was pretty darn good, all things considered. It just it wasn't as good. There's well, it's. Also- it, I mean, there are, there are certain things that it does better. For example. The, the the position of the player and the batter on the right side of the screen is better. Yeah. Uh, you can bigger. see the pitch. You can see the pitch as it's delivered. You have more time to react. You also see, for what it's worth, you see the the grandstand behind the pitcher. So it looks like they didn't draw too well at our game, but because- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I mean, if me and you went out to the field and played. It's time. like it's like going to like one of the uh, local teams mm-hmm. uh, to see what they've got on. Believe it or not, boat there's an uh, uh, there's an Apple two Apple slash Apple two GS versus this as well, which I didn't Ooh. look at. But I'm Maybe we'll have to it, fire that up on a later Taze Valley Classic Computer Club night. That's what the people are rambling for to see some hot <laughs> Earl Weaver action. Every part of that sounds wrong <laughs> on the Apple two GS. <laughs> so. Where would you put this? I mean, you you just did a video. You should plug this on all the baseball games on the Amiga. I mean, now that you've said that, I'm, I, I'm studying to replay this before, but I'm happy that you're so enthusiastic about it. Like, where do you put this in terms of fun, the fun value of this? Well, it depends on the how other you define baseball fun. Games. <clears throat> it's, a, you know, if you define fun by being a baseball manager, this game is at the top of the charts. If you define fun as playing baseball, this is one of the weaker efforts on the Amiga. I mean, you really have to go to something like TV Sports Baseball to get a worse experience. Uh, the, uh, the, Of course, the championship baseball on the Amiga is the absolute worst. It is a barely reskinned version of a Star League baseball for the Atari 800. Um, but this, like. game, this game is, uh, this game is, is fine. Um, but I, you know, I'd, I'd fire up Hardball 2. Uh, and I'd play that overall, uh, that that or RBI Baseball 2 on the Amiga, which uh, I don't believe they got RBI Baseball 1. I think it was just RBI Baseball 2. I'd play either one of those over this one if you're looking for a game to play. But as far as management goes, stick with Earl. If you, if you want to, if you like Tom Landry on the Amiga and you like that sort of gameplay, this is your boy. I, I, one thing, and I'll close it here. If I was going to watch 
a full game of it played by itself without my involvement on any of these games would be this one. This one has the real players, and they actually pitch and do the stuff that they did in real life. If you want realism, brother, you go call Earl Weaver. If you ask any Amiga repair technician what the most problematic component of a motherboard is, they'll undoubtedly mention capacitors. The electrolytic capacitors that ship with the Amiga are 30 years old or older at this point, and each one is a ticking time bomb waiting to explode battery acid all over your motherboard, sometimes damaging it irrevocably. Don't wait. Replace your capacitors now. Full capacitor kits for every Amiga model are available now at RetroRewind.ca. Don't want to attempt the repair yourself? Use their white glove recap service and leave the intricate removal and soldering process to the professionals using industry standard equipment. Use the promo code AMIGOS10 at checkout and save 10% off your cap kit or service. Remember, make RetroRewind.ca your first stop for all your Commodore computer needs. Oh yeah, hit it, Bert. All right, man. It is time. We, you know, there's a lot to get through. We were, uh, we we had an abbreviated uh, Amiga News segment last week during Boat Fest. We got a lot of things to catch up on, and the first right. story this week, Aaron, is Doug' 10 minute Amiga retrocast from uh, Dynamic Computing has started a uh, his his annual tradition of uh, the Amiga Art Contest 2023. Uh, this thing uh, runs for six months, so you got plenty of time. I believe that almost anything goes, as long as you've created it on an Amiga. <laughs> yeah. they've, got, uh, they've got categories for ray tracing. They've got categories for art. They've got categories for music. Once again, BarkBit left alone uh, on the dance floor, not asked to judge even though he is probably the most accomplished Amiga artist the world has ever known. Unfortunately, they've got that Kevin Saunders. Do you even know what Kevin Saunders has done? Is he one of French and Saunders? I think he's one of Doug's friends. I don't know. Back when Doug says that everybody was talking about the Amiga and it was a big... I think it was just Doug and his buddy. That was have his... you considered something? Barkbit may be previously gauged. This guy's That's a musical true. genius. He's not just hanging out at the pad waiting for the phone to ring. He's doing gigs, brother. He probably turned gigs. Doug down. That's true. Him, well, anyway, Hoffman, all those guys, they got stuff going on. Listen, there were there were big money and big prizes that were handed out uh, last year in the Amiga Art Competition. I'm sure they haven't announced either of those yet, but I'm sure that coming up soon they're going to announce what you can win as being a, one of the mighty winners of this thing. Uh, this is always a good time. Doug always runs an 11 to 12 hour stream. Where he talks about each one of the uh, each one of the entrants. Sometimes he's joined by a special guest. I believe uh, Pixel Vixen has joined him in the past. So make sure you uh, check this out. Make sure you enter if you are artistically inclined. This is the Amiga Art Contest 2023, uh, and uh, you can uh, check it out uh, on uh, YouTube. Just search for a Ten Mark. It's his latest video, and you can also go directly to the website. AmigaArtwork.com. AmigaArtwork.com will take you there. You going to enter something this year, Boat? Uh, well, you know, I entered Lane Melangelo last year. Somehow I didn't make it to the stream. I don't know what yeah. happened. I think there was a, something happened in transmission. You know, we should do some, like, modern art piece. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, we should build something out in the field and set it on fire. You know, and then ray know, trace it. That's right. <laughs> that's it, Boat. Now you're getting, now you're becoming an Amigan, my friend. Well done. <laughs> Oh, speaking of this. becoming, speaking of becoming an Amigan, uh, yeah. we're gonna have many more Amigas Amigans join us because yeah. the Amiga Maxi Aaron has been confirmed. Of course, oh, uh, a couple okay. of years ago we had the uh, Amiga Mini, the A five hundred Mini. This is your personal favorite device with you and Amy Jimmy Love Fest. Yeah, uh, now hey, I love that guy. The big dog has come. The A five hundred Maxi. Now, of course. The big question is, what shape is this thing going to take? Uh, is it going to be in the shape of an Amiga 1200, the 600, the 500? They you know, would be great. Is it if they made it look like the 2000? It's just big, huge, <laughs> just a pizza box. Thing. And the inside of it is a board the size of a, of a walnut to control the whole <laughs> thing. That'd be great. Now, you know, we, we've had a spirited discussion over on Discord, Aaron, about what, what if they were going to emulate a classic Amiga system, what it should be. 
Uh, you know, I'm leaning towards the 600. There were some discussion that if you do make it the size of the 600, you lose the numpad, to which I want to respond, look how well the A500 Mini did without a numpad or a keyboard at all. I don't well, think that's yeah. an issue. You got um, a good point there. And there's, I think, there's, there's some stuff that uses a numpad, but there's ways around it, brother. Virtual keyboard, right. virtual keyboard. You know, so, so yeah, I'm with you. What do you think, Aaron? If you were going to choose between the 500, the 600, or the 1200, which one of the wedges do you think it's going to be modeled at? Uh, so I guess CDTV's out. Then we can't mm, get that. I, man, that would be I'd be number one with a Listen, bullet buying on that thing. I hadn't thought about it, you know, because it's you know it is what it is. But I mean, see, you're you're actually I never thought I'd say this, but you're a genius, Bode. The 600, that's the way to go. Think about it. You're one of these. Uh, uh, who are the guys that make this thing? One of these geeks. You're like, mm -hmm. listen, we're gonna make At a full game. size version of this, but we don't wanna we don't wanna uh break the bank. You know what I mean? You get the six hundred it's not a whole lot bigger than the five hundred mini, right? And the rest of it doesn't matter. You put the keyboard in that sucker, you're good to go. And hey, we all like the form factor of the six hundred. Plus this will be the six hundred that has AGA, it's the ultimate version. You know, then you call up uh, uh, Amy, Jimmy, go over and get that deal, put that on the thing. You're ready to rock and roll. I think it's, I think it'll be dandy. The price will be key, Boat. Absolutely, absolutely. So we'll be waiting and, of course, updating you with the latest news as it appears. And yes, this thing will have a working keyboard. I mean, my God, you'd have to be an idiot to break the A500 Maxi or whatever and not put a working keyboard. I would, on. yeah, I would hope that would be the reason you'd go, Maxi. But Can who you knows? That? Who knows? <laughs> if the right, old Aaron. Commodore were running this, that's what they do. You know, we you've meant to talk about this for the past several months. Yes. It's finally the eleventh hour. It's time to give it a proper plug. Get it. Yes, this is our good buddy Frodo. He's in the chat right now. Tomorrow, as we record this, or today, as you listen to it, if you're getting this right off the presses, July first, eleven o'clock C E S T. I don't know what what is that in, in Eastern Standard Time boat. Oh gosh! I Come on, boat. Uh, it's a fifteen-hour charity stream. Oh, central. It's Central Europe Standard Time. I bet that's what that means. Okay. It's probably uh, in a couple hours from now. So, fifteen-hour charity stream for gamers beat cancer. My dad had cancer. I don't like it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Get that thing out of here. Uh, this is going down again, uh, July 1, twenty three. You can go to twitch.tv forward slash Frodo NL. Frodo NL smells like it sounds. 15 hours. I can't think of a guy. That's 5 a.m. Eastern Standard. Frodo in the house with the picking it up. Uh, that is uh, early, but I mean it runs for fifteen hours. So I mean, you know, yeah, what do you, Frodo what informs do you... us in the chat. That's five a.m. Yeah. Eastern Standard Time if you're in the East Coast. I'm looking at what he's got on tap here, boat. You got your retro games, C64. And then you got Tiny Thor, the Mortuary Assistant, golf with your friends, and he's taking it to the house with Jackbox party packs oh. and similar games. With a couple of freebies in there, and he's got some milestones in here. Hopefully, he have some milestones where you do where he, if you get the money, he'll do something real funny or stupid. Frodo does like puts on wacky outfits and does all kinds of crazy stuff. Listen, we love Frodo. We love charity. For God's sakes, head over there and check out Frodo's charity stream. Should be good stuff, Bode. Absolutely, absolutely. And thank you, Frodo. Good job, buddy. What else uh, we got Aaron, here, Bode? This is a this is an interesting story that ran across. You know, I uh, I recently completed a uh, cross stitch picture. I I'm sort of a that. I'm sort of I'm sort of a needle worker in my in my spare time. I enjoy yeah. a good embroidery every once in a while. This is a picture that I thought about undertaking in the past. This is the, uh, yeah, the Jim famous. Sachs Lagoon picture, which is one of the classic pictures uh, of the Amiga when it was first released. Just yeah. so beautiful and colorful. So nice. It shows yeah. a tropical island with an Amiga monitor with the water running off it like a waterfall. Well, somebody on the uh, Amiga subreddit has used a generative AI to fill in and make the the background um, uh, a sort of a, an aspect ratio that you could use it for like a 16 by 9 monitor or something yeah. like that. Uh, this is, to me, this is the, the picture when it comes to the Amiga that, that sort of celebrates everything that that, that platform represented. Uh, and I just wanted to share with everybody because maybe not everybody has seen it. Um, is this something you, you'd like to put on your old uh, uh, um, computer uh, wallpaper, Aaron? Yeah, it's a beauty. Uh, you know, it's funny that the Amiga, you could tie it. I don't think any other computer I could think of is like this. There are certain pictures you could tie it to, you know. Then this is one of them. There's that picture of King Tut that you see mm -hmm. all the time. That's another one. You know, and but this right here, uh, just a, a, a beautiful 
beautiful. And and you're right. The expansion of it's it's. I mean, gosh, the AI. What can it do? You know what I mean, yeah. Boat? Yeah. I do like the fact that someone used a computer to make this picture, and then the computer expanded on the thing that was the computer was used to make in the first place. So Mind it's blowing. man and machine. There's some synergy there, Boat. The computer, the AI is our friend. Mm-hmm. Theoretically, it looks good though. Good, good <laughs> find, Boat. Nice one, eh? Uh, coming up next. Uh, this is uh, something that came to us from Level Lord. Level Lord, a huge football fan, loves the Sensi. Uh, he's uh, super excited for Suveran soccer. They call it with a weird umlaut name to confuse us Americans. Yeah, but listen, too hard this for us. is this looks like sort of the next level in terms of uh, what to expect from a you know the the classic sensible simple artwork design, but <laughs> tilted on its side in a pseudo. 3D perspective. What do you think about this thing, Aaron? I did, did we see like a real, real early? We picture, did. Like we did several idea? years ago. We checked this out. It, I mean, listen. I'm looking at it now, and it looks like you're getting the best of both worlds here. You've got the tiny little Cincy guys with a, with a nice 3D tilt on it. I like the I like the the speed of it. I like the look of the of the of the uh, scrolling. You know, it looks good. I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie. You know, I'm not the biggest soccer fan. Uh, but this looks like something I could get into, Boat. Is there any idea on when this thing's going to be uh, hitting the door? No. No, there. it's still under development. But you can see that the, the mechanics of the game, as far as the passing, the dribbling, everything is coming along. And, um, you know, if you watch this video, you can find out all of the things that have been updated. But uh, when this thing comes out, I'm definitely going to try it because Sensible Soccer is the only soccer game that I've ever really enjoyed. You know, this says here that they're they're working this like it for to work on stock Amiga 1200. Hey, that's fine. I think yeah. anyone can play that these days. And uh, of course, it also works on faster things. So that's great. I'm that is I'm really looking forward to that. That's a real impressive video there, Boat. Yeah, good find, and Lord. It, and Aaron, our final our final story of the week. Guardian, the Legend of Flaming Sword. Oh, I want to talk about a great. title. Yeah. <laughs> Get yourself a flaming sword. This thing is by Yaws Montana. And uh oh, that's th a good name too. <laughs> yeah. And uh this is it's very, very early days, uh, but it's very colorful. It kind of reminds me of uh of the old uh Adventure Island or Wonder Boy, the first Wonder Boy game. Uh very colorful enemies. You're collecting fruit, you're bouncing along a platforming world. Uh I am a sucker for this kind of game. And, uh, you know, this is, like I said, this is the first demo that we've seen of it. But uh, I'm definitely going to be watching along to keep track with the development of this game. Uh, you got a little Canine Pal, too, which looks to be cool. So uh, props to Saberman, of course, for, for recording all this footage. I don't know what kind of inside line Saberman has, but he always seems to get the scoop. Yeah, well, I mean, he, hey, listen, he gets it done. So uh, yeah. big head, big thumbs up to him and any retro news. This looks, you're right. I think you nailed this. Uh, this definitely has that Adventure Island feel to it. Uh, it's early days, you can tell that. But I think if he uh, puts a lot of speed into this, uh, I think it might be funny. It's definitely colorful and interesting looking, but for sure. Aaron, what's been going on on the old YouTube channels these days? Well, you know, we haven't. Of course, we've had. Uh, we just got back from Boat Fest, boat. So. We only released a couple videos this uh, this week, but they were boat from Boat Fest. What are the mm. odds, right, Boat? Uh, the first one we did at Boat Fest Live was Wings. Uh, you want to talk about Wings real briefly? Wings. What can you say? It's Cinema Warriors masterpiece. It's yeah. probably the only great game they ever released. No, because there's TV Sports basketball in there amongst others. Uh, but yeah, we had a lot of fun with Wings. Hey, I'll do Wings live anywhere. Good to go. And then myself and the Brent. The Brent took center stage here, Boat. Again, he was the auctioneer. <laughs> now he's the king dog of ARG because it was the ARG Wheel of Fun live from Boat Fest where Brent had this cockamamie scheme and I was drug along like a, like a helpless uh, prisoner as he went through it. But we, we did the best we could there, Boat. So if you want to see a couple of shows from Boat Fest, there you go. Now, <clears throat> we would be remiss, Boat. If we didn't discuss it, if you're watching this live or if you picked this up uh, the day after we film it, then you are just in time to join us Saturday night, July 1, Boat. It's all going down at the BGW Arena, Battleground Wrestling, back in action, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as the crow flies, right after Frodo's stream. You're like, what do I do now? Bam. You join us on our Twitch channel to watch Battle of the Dunes headlined. 
by Fuego del Sol. It'll be me, the Southern Dandy, a.k.a. Boat, and Professor Wrestling, the Hoser Tim Leg. Are you looking forward to this one? I cannot wait. This is going to be our first <laughs> ever multicam shoot. We're going to have it. We're, we're in a slightly different location. We're going to have camera angles that will blow your mind. Well, the funny thing is, we've tried to have a multicam shoot, and it's never worked once. So this time, for real, this time, Boat, I'm sure it'll work great. This One time, time we man. tried, we forgot the cable. <laughs> <laughs> and also, hopefully, we won't be at the 11th hour trying to figure right. out the Wi Fi password or whatever, like last time. It should be a lot of fun. By the way, Super Oprah will be on the show. My personal favorite. I, I think she's the boat. opening match, too. So Listen, Super Oprah has never had a bad match, as far as I'm yeah. concerned, Boat. That's all we got, Boat. All right. Well, coming up next week, Aaron, we are going to be playing a little game I like to call Double Dragon. Double Dragon. Now, this you want to explain the summer of arcade to the people? Uh, yeah. So we are starting into uh, July, the month of July, in the next few weeks. And all throughout the month of July, we have actually pre-taped Amigos. Uh, several, it seems like several months ago at this point, we started doing this. Uh, so you can enjoy some arcade delights, or in the case of uh, of uh, Double Dragon, whatever the opposite of that is, and uh, and enjoy our our witty banter. Uh, we have uh, several shows that have been pre-recorded because during the month of July, Aaron and I are going to be taking a well-deserved break, and uh, we will be chilling, hanging, and banging. Uh, and not doing the podcast, but we have plenty of episodes lined up for you, and we will be back with a fury that can only be observed in August. And also, I will say, ARG will be, Brent is a slave driver, so it will be taped as usual. So it will be, I don't get a complete break. But yeah, <laughs> hey, listen, I know what you, people are listening like, oh, man, pre tape these are solid gold. I'm telling you, don't think to yourself, all oh, they phoned it in. Oh, no. It was full, we on, full bore. That's right. We had a good time on all these. So it yeah. should be a lot of fun, Boat. All right. Well, guys, thank you as always for watching. We will see you next time. And until then, adios. adios. Amigos is made possible by contributions from listeners like you. Patreon supporters help choose the games we play, receive exclusive magnets, and get access to the Amigos Retro Gaming Discord server. Visit patreon.com slash amigospodcast if you'd like to support the show and join our community.